Okay, so uh, I thought I'd just kind of bring up my uh, laptop and uh, show you what I see when I uh, teach. Um, forgive the lag. Uh, usually these seats are mostly occupied with students. It's kind of weird to be lecturing to a room um, without actual humans in it. Well, other than me, if you can count me. Um, since I'm going to actually be doing demos today with uh, chemicals, I'm wearing um, safety goggles. Uh, these, these are actually prescription goggles um, and uh, bifocals at that. So yay technology, and it is lovely being able to read the labels that are on, um, on the chemicals. So uh, that'll just be parked to the side, and then you can see that it's actually me doing stuff. Uh, okay. Interesting uh, for me, the YouTube ha um, in Second Life has frozen, but it is live um, on the website. So far, so good. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, Chantal. Um, I will be very happy to have that. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, let me let me start now. So um, going over here, um, that's my title slide. Uh, I did not get to do have time to do much of a PowerPoint. I'm just going to delete stuff. And you know what? I usually I usually um, steal stuff from like uh, wiki pages and uh, the like for uh, illustration. Um, so yeah, here's here's what like. Uh, wiki has on chemical equilibria. I did not think that you would be particularly pleased at just seeing math, right? There, there's no pictures. The way this is taught is often through a lot of math and with uh, not a lot of pictures. So that, that ends up being a problem. So while I am probably going to uh, show you a tiny bit of math today, so sorry, um, the uh, I'm going to uh, try to draw things out for you and do a chalk talk on it. Okay, so um, let's see. Bear with me because there's an aspect of clunkiness to this that is not fun. Paint. There we go, and then I can make that make that bigger. So, so, so that's where we are. So, chemical equilibrium. What is a chemical equilibrium? Chemical equilibrium is a, a fundamental type of reaction. I'm going to give you an example. Um, there is a chemical out there, vinegar. I think everyone's uh, familiar with uh, vinegar. It's actually acetic acid. And what I'm going to do is uh, draw things out and then um, take pictures and post them to you. Acetic acid does this. Give me a second. Um, in water. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. There is a bit of clunkiness here. Delete, control V, and we'll make that bigger. Okay, so hopefully you can see what I've drawn here, um, which essentially has, has, um, well, let me draw now. And there we go which essentially has, there we go, a um, structure of acetic acid that reacts with the water. And what happens is that a hydrogen atom just gets transferred. The left slide is cut off. Okay. Um, what you can do if, uh, what you can do is, um, 
uh, click on the um, uh, resize if you want. It should not be uh, cut off in world because uh, you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing at this point. I think so. Um, basically, this is an example of a uh, chemical equilibrium. What happens here is that this reaction does not go to completion. This reaction, and let me draw, okay, come on, let me draw. This reaction, that little set of arrows right there. All right. Yep, thank you, Chantal. Um, it's looking like uh, everyone sees their own view. I've got it uh, set to 33% uh, uh, in my view. So if you uh, click on 33%, um, or uh, I can resize, we can uh, get all on the same page. I thought we would be uh, all seeing the same thing. All right. Okay, so um, I'm going to let you guys sort out your uh, sizing options, uh, which I guess are more individual than I thought they would be, uh, and then we'll continue. Um, so the idea here is that acetic acid, which is the CH3 double bond OOH, um, can lose an H plus. It can lose the H, the uh, H plus, which um, is, is located on that thing, and it can pop over onto a water. Um, this reaction happens maybe in one in a hundred times. One in a hundred acetic acid molecules undergo this reaction, okay? Um, that's why we have this um, set of arrows here. Uh, it's not a forward-facing arrow, which uh, indicates that we would have just a one-way reaction. This reaction can uh, be reversed. Okay? The um, H plus can pop back on to this thing over here, which is called an acetate, and you know remake the starting materials. I'm going to draw an energy diagram. Give me one second. Bum, 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 bum. All right, I'm going to replace that image by a new one. Make it bigger and make it so that the 33% crowd would be able to see it, okay? So essentially what I've got, essentially what I've got is two wells. And this well right here, I guess that's not a good uh, drawing program. Delete. I gotta choose the bottom. This well right here would be where the, um, Reactants would sit. You can just think of a little pool of molecules all just kind of bopping along in there. Um, they're, they're always moving, they're always colliding. There's water, there's some acetic acid. There, it's, it's, it's always moving around. Okay? So, what happens in these collisions um, is that up here, Sometimes, sometimes on, on, ooh, sometimes on uh, this side, sometimes on that side, uh, just from the randomness of your collisions, there's enough energy to make a hydrogen uh, pop onto a water. Okay? Well, that energy transfer corresponds to hiking up this little hill and then being in this little well. 
little shallower well. And I can tell that this well is a little um, shallower and it's got, um, from the perspective of this well, going over to the uh, starting materials is a lot easier because it takes a lot of less energy. So this well is going to be less occupied. This one is going to be an en uh, endothermic. Yes, it does require energy to make, make this happen. Um, there, are, there are things that we can do. We can, basically, um, we can basically make some labels here. Let me draw something. When I draw something with a pen, it's permanent and it looks better. And I'm I'm not going to use the standard chemical notation. I'm just going to use some, just going to call it uh, an activation energy and a um, energy change. Okay. Oops. Um, hello. And there we go. Okay. Hey. I'll get rid of that. Um, so yeah. So basically, um, it takes to to go from to go from the starting materials over here to get into um, the well on to get into the well on there we go Some, somewhat hard to move things around um, on the right you can see um, that it takes quite a bit of energy to go back it uh, takes much less energy it really it really only takes um, let me see if I can make the box the right size. It really only, it really only takes, um, you know, the height of that box to go back. Okay. Equilibrium is all about en energy um, differences. We can, um, we can, we can actually uh, predict how fast these uh, reactions are going to happen from uh, the heights of these barriers. Uh, and I wanted to do just the tiniest bit of math at you. So sorry. Um, I'm just going to write down an equation. The generally accepted equation is that uh, rate is equal to some constant times the concentrations of everything you've got present. So. Um, So I'm going to keep that picture, move it off to one side, but give you a different picture instead. Um, function alt print to eight. Good. Okay. So. Sorry for the math, but how fast the reaction goes? And you'd say, well, that'd be in concentration per second, how the concentration changes every second, is going to be dependent on like your concentrations. So the square brackets around uh, some symbol means concentrations. So I put HA as the acetic acid, and I'm going to put the water in there as well. Um, because the acetic acid and the water have to bump into each other. Um, they're going to bump into each other every once in a while. Uh, and uh, collisions are how chemical reactions happen. Not every chemical reaction results in a collision, or uh, not every collision results in a chemical reaction. So sorry. Uh, so that's why we have a constant here in the front that basically tells you that not every uh, reaction is going to. Um, result in, or not every collision is going to result in a reaction. Now, we can do things, we can do things like consider hello, we can consider this uh, picture again over here, and we can um, figure that there's going to be a forward reaction. Oh, my pointer is actually kind of live and a reverse reaction, okay? 
So maybe what I can do is actually uh, write down the rate equations for the forward and reverse. I'm going to put the I'm going to make uh, the constant for the forward into a kf rate equals and k reverse. I'll call it kr. And then, oh, what are the products again? We are looking at H3O plus and acetate. All right. So, bam. Let's do that. Da, 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 where am I? Done with that one and control V. And I want to thank everyone for your patience with me on, on this. This is brand new. So here's the thing. Um, the rate of going forward, this, that's this top one up here would be constant times the concentrations of those two things, the things that have to collide to make the reaction go. The rate of going backwards is a different constant times the products of the reaction. Okay? What I've got up here, I'm calling A minus this uh, CH3CO minus. It's easier to draw. Now, at equilibrium, it looks like nothing is going on. Looks like nothing is going on at equilibrium. But the thing is that there's a lot going on. The thing is that the forward reaction is happening at an equal rate to the reverse reaction. So it looks like nothing is going on because the concentrations are always the same, right? But it's not always the same molecules in the same states. Okay, think of hockey, for example. There's six people on the ice, you know, six team members on the ice, but it's not always the same six team members. Or think about going to McDonald's, right? So maybe there's like three people in front of you in line, right? Well, someone gets served and they get out of line, but someone comes in and lines up behind you. Well, that line still has you and three other people in it. So. Um, equilibrium is always about is always about uh, forward reactions and reverse reactions happening at the same rate. And we can continue into math. I mean, here's the thing. If we take those two equations and make them equal to each other, what we can do is put concentrations on one side and constants on another side. Uh, let me do that real fast uh, for you or, or at you, um, as the case may be. K forward over K reverse will end up being concentration H3O plus concentration of A minus all over mumble, 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 H2O. And I'm kind of doing this kind of sloppy, but that's okay. Function, alt, constraint. Okay. Uh, Okay, that appears. Interesting. I had long window when I recorded function alt constraint. And now there we go. Come on. There we go. Way too bigger. Okay, so here you see constants on one side. And then concentrations on the other. And it's basically the concentrations of all the products up top, concentrations of all the starting materials on the bottom. And that ends up, that ratio of concentrations ends up being a constant. That constant's called the equilibrium constant. We just call it K, big K. Um, this is one way of achieving a big K. Uh, you know, it's a bit. There, there, there's some things that other chemists might uh, criticize for me, but I think for an audience saying, hey, how fast the reaction goes forward, how fast the reaction goes backwards, and this tiny amount of math gets you something that's actually a fundamental thing in, in chemistry. These reactions can happen very fast. The forward reaction and the backward reaction 
goes very, very, very fast. Um, it's all related to the height of the barrier. Um, in fact, each individual KF or KR can be uh, related to the height of the barrier. There's an um, exponential um, relationship there. I'm not going to um, uh, be evil um, at you uh, with this. But essentially, we can have all sorts of reactions that happen. Um, let's see. I think it's time for a demo. So um, what I'm going to do is actually tell you what I'm going to do. There, there's something funny about that statement, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to do the cobalt demo first. Let me write down uh, what, what happens here. We've got a blue form and a pink form. And I hope I brought the right um, chemical with me. Um, I brought, um, oh, I brought cobalt 2 acetate. Ah, oh, man, OK. We'll try it with this. I don't think it's the right stuff. Darn, um, cobalt 2 acetate. Um, and essentially, uh, what I'm hoping for is that uh, we have um, cobalts with waters attached to it as one form. And I think that's the pink form. And when I dissolve it in ethanol, there's another form of it. And let, let me just um, copy that for you. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Function, alt, print screen. Okay, so yeah, so basically there's a uh, cobalt form. It's actually, I think it's supposed to be three plus. I got to two plus. We'll see if it works. Um, and then there's um, another form, which is actually a cobalt. Usually it's a tetrachloride when you do this. But we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to go over the live stream. There is lag in the live stream. Okay, so uh, let's see. Um, let's see. I've got my... Um, cobalt acetate. I'm going to take a little bit and pop it into a um, test tube. Tube of test. And I'm thinking if this is going to work when I dissolve it in ethanol, ethyl alcohol, it's, it's not like gin or anything like that. We're not allowed to have that on campus. Uh, plus, it's, it's like distilled with, from benzene to make it drier. Uh, you would not want to be having this like cancer tonic. So ethanol and then, ah, uh, man, okay. Uh, that's terrible. Okay, so yeah, I brought the wrong chemical. Not a bad thing anyway because I brought lots of other chemicals and uh, it's, it's actually not dissolving all that well. But what the hell? Let's throw something else in there. There's, there's ways around, there's ways around this. Uh, see, let's go with a little KCL. I know the blue form is when you've got lots of chloride present. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I mean. Still not. A little water to actually make it dissolve. It's like cooking with Julia. Okay. All right, well, um, every demo you do, you have to make a sacrifice to the chemistry gods, um, be it a demo that doesn't work or a finger. Uh, so I still have all my fingers. So here's the demo that doesn't work. Guess what? We'll do the demos I tried. There is all sorts of equilibria. You can have an equilibria set up just when you dissolve something, okay? Uh, so for example, one that I'm going to show you involves silver chloride as a solid. And when it dissolves, it breaks up into individual fragments like a silver plus. 
and I'm just going to put an AQ and a chloride minus AQ, and let's get that in front of you. Um, looking on my windows, function alt function. Make things go away. Delete, delete, delete. Control V. Make things bigger. So here's a here's an example of an equilibrium. Right. One aspect of equilibria is that they I've I've mixed randomly more chemicals than I want to think about. Um, I'm again surprised that I have all my fingers um, and um, that's, yeah, that's scary. So, so coming back, let's um, think about this silver chloride. So when you have silver chloride sitting in solution, it just looks like some white powder sitting under a solution of like clear liquid. But here's the thing, there's always some of the silver chloride dissolving. And there's some of it reprecipitating. The rates are equal, so it looks like nothing is happening. Okay? But an equilibrium is a live reaction. Let's say, let's say that you did something. Gee, okay, that's weird. I need a bit more experience. Let's say that you did something that made some of the silver go away or turned it into something else, that would cause this equilibrium to react by making more silver chloride dissolve. So the concentration of silver is in accord with our equilibrium constant equation, right? So let me show you some uh, react reactions here. I have a molecule, it's called, um, if you can see this, it is silver hexafluorophosphate. So Ag, and then Ag plus has to have an anion. The anion is PF6 minus. This stuff is not terribly soluble in water, and it's also something that has kind of gone bad for the uses I would use it for. So um, we're going to use it for demos. It's a gray powder. Let's pop it in. Oops, I don't want to slap it around too much. And you'll, you'll see me struggle to keep finding the lid. Gray powder. It's supposed to be a white powder. It's gray. That's why I don't trust it for uh, the student's research. I've got water. We're going to try to dissolve it. And you can see I get a cloudy solution. Some of it dissolves. Okay, So this is the same sort of thing. The AGPF6 tries to break up and turns into Ag plus and PF6 minus in solution. But it's not quite there yet. I can make the rest of the AGPF6 dissolve by turning whatever silver has dissolved into something else. So. Let's use concentrated ammonia. Uh, this is um, wa uh, just a water solution into which as much ammonia um, has been dissolved as can possibly dissolve. Um, this has quite the odor. One thing in Second Life you're not getting is uh, the, just the pungent odor of this. And I'm going to try not to spill any. All right. So, I'm going to just move my laptop just a little bit here uh, so that I can do this over a sink. Yeah. There we go. Do this over a sink. I'm just going to pull a little bit right out of the bottle. Now that clears your sinuses, and I'm going to put the lid back on. Oh my God. Uh, and now let's see. Okay. Come on. There we go. 
So as I add some of this stuff, you can see cloudiness goes away. I'll just add a little bit more. Oops, all of it went in. That's OK. OK, so I got my silver to dissolve. What if I didn't want my silver to dissolve, right? Well. I chose AGPF6 because it was a little bit soluble to begin with, but not terribly. I could pull the rest of it into solution by adding some ammonia. You actually make a silver with two ammonias attached. But you could add chloride. And if you add chloride, what happens is that the reaction on the screen, um, this thing, this thing over here, well, if I didn't have any chloride to begin with, um, an equilibrium reacts to kind of push back against you. If I didn't have any chloride to begin with, the reaction would go towards the left to form silver chloride, try and get rid of some of the stuff. Fair enough? So let's add some chloride. OK, I'm going to put this thing down for one second. There we go. I actually have a rack of test tubes here. Uh, I'm going to make up fresh test tube. I've got potassium chloride. I'm hoping the lag isn't a deal breaker for us. I'm just going to scoop some out with a clean spatula because these are research chemicals and I don't want to keep them clean. I don't want much, just a little bit. Okay, so a little bit of potassium chloride. This will dissolve in water to give you uh, K plus ions and uh, Cl minus ions. Kind of funny, the uh, doors keep opening and people keep popping their heads in. Um, they would be welcome. We have a Boy Scout event happening today. I did not know that was happening. Otherwise, I would have um, had them uh, come too. Okay. Silver over here, chloride over here, and if we're lucky and have been good, we don't get anything happening. Oh, look, there's just a little bit of cloudiness. Big bucks, no whammies. Okay, I was a little too conservative with that, but you can see some cloudiness. Some solid is trying to form. Okay. We can be... You know, being, being careful is not a bad thing because then that means we can continue to uh, add a bit more chloride and see what happens. Hoping you don't mind some of uh, my meanderings here. Okay, dissolving. That's a more concentrated solution. It's got more of the chloride in. Bam, bam, bam. And mixing it so you can see. There we go. Okay, so now you can see the cloudiness, and we've definitely got chloride back. Okay, chloride doesn't compete so well with ammonia, though, and I can make this go away. Um, this is me manipulating this equilibrium so that we can, um, you know, force it to go favor the left or force it to favor favor the right. I'm back with the ammonia. It smells lovely. Now let's see what happens to our cloudy solution as I add a little bit of ammonia. Oh, look, I made the silver chloride go away. Okay, so what we can do is manipulate equilibria. Um, they're live reactions. They're always happening. If it were a dead reaction that just went and stopped, then nothing we did would make any difference to this stuff. Okay? So I got one more part of this demo. Hopefully everyone's doing okay. All right. Um, one more part of this demo. I've got ba 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 ba. Okay. So this is potassium bromide. Turns out that bromide will also bind to silver to make a solid, 
but it binds more strongly than chloride does. It can outcompete both the chloride and the ammonia. So what I'm going to do is show you what happens when we add some uh, potassium bromide to this uh, solution. All right, obviously, we're going to get a solid. That solid, I can add as much ammonia to it as I want, and it's not going to redissolve. Okay, KBR, the pirate's favorite chemical, right? KBR, next to argon. Okay, dissolved. Here's our silver solution, plus everything else. Putting KBR back in there, yeah. Um, nothing subtle about the formation of that precipitate. And opening up the um, opening up the let's let's actually put this thing down back in the rack so I'm not like pouring it on myself. Okay, so back with the ammonia, you can see all of that. It won't be subtle. That's the first edition. I'll do three editions. Now, always before we were able to get everything to dissolve pretty easily. Nothing. All right. Again, I'm hoping to lag on this. Three editions of concentrated ammonia. This is smelling lovely. Um, Sounds like the litter boxes. I have four cats. Um, anyway, <laughs> there's no redissolving. Okay, but we can manipulate equilibria quite quite readily. You know what? Let's come back to this thing. This thing has uh, acetate and water attached to it, but cobalt kind of likes to have ammonia attached to it. Let me uh, let me just see what happens here. Uh, this is not planned. This is extemporaneous. Um, this is going to happen in the waste container anyway. Uh, so why not see what happens here? Back to our cobalt. Uh, what would happen probably is that my prediction would probably be that we would have a color change as um, things that are attached to the cobalt um, swap out for ammonia. Oh, look at that. The uh, color change I was hoping for has happened. Hmm. Okay, so we've got um, cobalt swapped out for ammonia and um, it's another equilibrium. This is another live reaction. If I ended, if I got rid of the ammonia by adding some acid, I brought glacial acetic acid. It does not come from a glacier, okay? It's basically 100% acetic acid. Vinegar is uh, like four and a half to 5% um, acetic acid. So this is glacial, it's 100%. Let's see what happens. It might be enough to neutralize the ammonia and uh, get back. This is also smelling lovely. Oh boy, um, and get, get us back to um, our pink form of cobalt. Okay. Sorry, while I'm paying attention to the live stream, I'm not paying as much attention. Oh, look at that. We've got some fumes happening. That's probably um, ammonium acetate. And then as I shake this, Color is less intense than it was. Just a few more drops. And we have the obligatory fumes for a chemistry demonstration. And yes, I still have my fingers and we've gone pink and blue. So um, wrong chemical, but if you know the chemistry, um, adding ammonia will turn it into a cobalt ammonia complex that has a different color. 
um, neutralizing the ammonia gets you back to the starting material. All righty. Hi, guys. You're welcome in here. I'm uh, giving a live presentation, though. So I actually like that last one, uh, the, the pink and the blue um, kind of showed you a little bit about what was going on here. Because, but I mean, the ammonia uh, silver complex has no color. Okay, I'm going to um, hop back over onto the, the computer here and kind of see how, how people, um, how people are, are, are doing. So far, so good. Is everyone all right over in, um, over in Second Life? Okay, let's see. So neuro is, um, actually what we're doing is looking at proton transfer. Um, we didn't do any electron transfer reactions. Um, those are a completely different talk. No, they're not a completely different talk at all, but it follows up on, um, on this particular talk. So, um, you know, I'm going to wrap up. Just because I see the time is uh, getting uh, towards the 1 p.m. and I have a history of going on way too long. So um, the idea of uh, chemical equilibrium is one where I'm going to bring this energy diagram back up. Um, function alt print screen. Control V and yes, okay, that's my second life screen. <laughs> I always have to make sure you're on the right screen when you do a screen copy. There we go, and we'll make you bigger. Okay, so wrapping up, coming back to the idea of chemical equilibrium, you've got chemicals. Um, they um, can react with each other, but they don't have to react 100%. There could be a stable state where most of them are present as starting materials. There could be an energy barrier they have to surmount, uh, and they get that energy to surmount the energy barrier just from the random collisions that are always happening. Uh, and then they can spend some time over here before random collisions send them back. On average, at the end of a chemical reaction, um, these transformations are still occurring. They're going forward and backward. And they can be occurring at a tremendous rate, trillions of times per second. Uh, it looks like nothing's happening, but when you disturb the equilibrium in some way, as we were doing with uh, the silver by changing the uh, amount of silver that was uh, present, uh, what happens is that we can really see these reactions are live. Um, you know, it's all a consequence of the law of conservation of energy. Um, you know, when you have a ball rolling down a hill, friction slows down the ball and the ball stops. The energy is not gone. It is turned into heat. And that heat is still present as motion, as motion of molecules. And those molecules never stop moving. And that's what enables these uh, equilibrium to happen. Okay, so that's, uh, that's where I am. Um, there's a lot more to chemical equilibrium. Um, we teach, oh, it's eight weeks in our second semester freshman chemistry on equilibrium. Um, it, there's a lot, there's a huge amount that we teach on it, but um, you don't need to be able to do all the math just from, um, you know, this casual uh, set of demos this week. I hope the um, I hope the lag in um, the live stream wasn't um, wasn't uh, terrible for you, but uh, you know I'm happy with your feedback, and we can see what improvements we can make in doing these sorts of things. In the future, I'll actually have slides prepared so that we can um, not do this uh, whiteboard thing uh, in this way. I think. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Let's see. Sizzy, thank you.
All right. I thank you for um, all of your attention here because and uh, patience with me. Uh, just the past few weeks have just been uh, very busy. Um, I'm teaching an overload, so it's four classes equivalent instead of three. I'm a constituency head, uh, chair of our graduate council on uh, campus. So there's a lot of meetings like board of trustees and stuff. I've started a new business. Um, so uh, it's been it's it, it's been um, a busy time for me. Yay. Susie, I think I will do this again. I really like the idea of doing demos for you guys because uh, uh, we got a lot of stuff. I can, I can really show a lot of different chemicals. These are the ones I can put together in five minutes. Uh, with uh, more preparation for things, I can like really show you some, some kind of cool stuff. Awesome. And you know, if anyone wants to do um, anyone wants to do this kind of thing as well, I'll, I'll be happy to kind of walk them through how to set up. Uh, I mean, essentially, setting up a live stream is not on YouTube is not a big deal. All I've done is uh, created an object, selected a side, and uh, chose a texture that's media and popped in the URL. Yay. A a any questions? I still had all my fingers. I should do a live stream on how to do a live stream. That's, you know, that's actually kind of weird, kind of a uh, thing that's um, fun. Um, you know, one of the things that I have to do when I teach, I, have, I teach a uh, course for an instrument called uh, Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectrometer, and the troubleshooting involves shutting things down and turning them back on. So trying to do a Zoom recording of the process of shutting the computer down on which the Zoom recording is occurring uh, often doesn't get recorded. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to, more than happy actually to uh, show you people how to make objects in Second Life, import objects from uh, the um, Thingiverse. Uh, and, you know, it takes a little bit of, um, um, time in Blender to clean some things up and uh, otherwise, yeah. All righty. So with that, uh, what I think I'll do is um, um, close down uh, my live streams, stop confusing the poor little nine-year-olds who keep coming in and wondering what's going on. Uh, and. Uh, um, you know, let, let everyone have their day back. So thank you all very much. And, uh, you know, basically, uh, Chantal, thank you very much. Uh, I had a colleague who was really interested in how this would go. Uh, so having a recording would be awesome. All right. So at this point, I'm going to not even save these objects because it's just a panel with a texture. Delete them. Thanks.